Today, we're gonna to take a look at the routing page on your SQ series console from Allen and Heath. Yes, they are sawing concrete right outside this room. So if it's really loud, I apologize for that. I'm doing the best with a really close shotgun microphone. So we'll see what we can do in post. If we select any input channel and then hit the routing tab, that's gonna show either one single channel or all of them together. So we can have a group of channels where we can see an overview of all what's going on with a lot of different channels, or we can see an individual channel and all the different places where that's sent. It's kind of like a spill out feature on the screen. Starting out at the top, we can select the direct out gear wheel, and this will bring up the page that talks about the direct output for this channel. We just have the direct output level. You'll probably want to keep this at zero unless you need to trim it back some, but the direct out settings are global. So that means if we change it on this channel, it changes it on all the channels. There's not a way to change it on the individual channel level. So there's different places where we can pick off where the direct out is gonna come off. Post preamp, post high pass filter, post gate, post insert return, post EQ, post compressor, and post delay. Post delay is gonna include the channel input delay. So if you didn't want that in your direct out, it doesn't have to be included. Most of the time though, if you're gonna want all your channel process, you should choose post compressor. Now this is really handy, especially if you've got the ME series of personal mixers and you want to route channels there as well. You can choose how much processing is sent to all of those inputs that's going to the ME mixer. Now, depending on the way that you mix front of house versus what you might need for monitors, you've got different options on how much processing you send. If you only compress a little bit at front of house, that's not gonna affect the monitors too much. You could go and apply all of your settings for post compression. At the very least though, I would choose post high pass filter. This will get rid of any extra rumble that's coming through on any input channel. It could really muddy up somebody's monitor mix. So at the very least, choose post high pass filter. Now you can also choose if it's the direct out is going to follow the fader or if it's gonna be like a post fader direct out. So if you pull the fader back, is the level gonna go down for that direct out? I recommend keeping this off. Same thing for follow DCA fader. We don't want the DCAs messing with the direct out for our monitor mixers. Now the three settings on the right, I would keep on. The follow mute, follow DCA mute, and follow mute group. This means that if you mute it at front of house so that it's not making noise coming through the main speakers, it's also going to be cut going to the in-ear monitors. This way, if somebody unplugs something, it doesn't pop through somebody's in-ears, which could be very loud and quite dangerous for their hearing. Next up down the line, we have our DCA assign and mute assign. DCAs are a way of remote controlling a fader with a one fader that controls them all. It's a little bit like Lord of the Rings, but less dramatic and a whole lot shorter. I guess the hobbits are short though. So anyway, I digress. So we can assign a channel to whatever DCA that we have here. We can see the names of the DCA groups across the top and we can view what other channels are in that if we hit the view button. So if we view the entire DCA, we can see all the channels that are assigned to that DCA. But we want to go back to this and see also our mute groups. We have mute groups in place so that we can mute a whole lot of channels all at once. This is helpful if something is starting to feed back or something is starting to distort or if we really just need to cut things. Now, I like mute groups for their utility, but what I prefer is to fade out inputs rather than just cut them all of a sudden. If there's any little bits of noise or little tails of reverb that are still on that channel, it's a lot less conspicuous when you turn it down slowly than when it just gets cut all of a sudden. So mute groups are handy, especially if you're doing setup stuff and need to cut things. But during a service or a show, you really wanna use DCAs and fade out inputs. I put my DCAs on this layer, you can see so that I can put all my band inputs and fade them out slowly or rather quickly if I want to, but I'd rather fade out things than have them suddenly cut. Now, DCAs will also allow you to mute. So if I mute the DCA on the drums, you can see that the mute buttons are flashing on the channels that are assigned to that. Now we can assign things to a mute group still, and maybe we wanna mute all of our band inputs all at once so that during rehearsal we can just cut stuff. We could do that with these mute groups, and let's say we assign it to that, and we could view everything that's assigned to there as well. The easiest way to turn a mute group on and off is to assign it to a soft key. So to do that, we're gonna to go to our setup page, we're gonna to go to our surface page, and then our soft controls tab. 
Then we can select which soft key we want to have assigned to a certain key command. So you can see soft one here, selected there, and we can have it select a mute group. Which mute group? Well, it's named right here. And if we changed it and we want it to be the vocal mute group, we could change that and hit apply. Now, when we do that, that's going to turn on and off that mute group. Now back at our routing page, if I wanted to assign all of the instruments to the instrument mute group. I could by going to view for instrument mute group and then selecting all of these that are applied. So now all of these are gonna turn off or be muted when I hit this mute group. For the vocals, if I selected these and go to mute assign and then hit view on that mute group, I could turn off the ones that are not in that group and I could turn on all of those. So now those are assigned to the vocal mute group. If I exit out of here and now I hit that for the mute group on the instruments, you can see that they're flashing muting a different speed now than it was when a DCA mute was on. And if I go to my vocal layer and hit soft two, which is assigned to that mute group, now that's gonna be there. Now you can see now I forgot to assign my guitar vocal to that mute group. So I'm gonna select it here, I'm gonna hit that channel, and now I can also assign it to the vocal mute group. Now all of them are flashing red. They're being muted. Now if I go to an individual channel and I try to mute it or unmute it, that's not gonna work. It's just gonna mute the channel at the channel layer or the channel level, but the mute group will not turn off. So you have to turn off the mute group and turn off the channel mute to unmute that. Hopefully now that does not trip you up. Back to our routing page. Let's keep going on the base. We can see our main sends. So the main send is going to our left right bus. We can unassign it here by turning it off. And over on the left side, you'll see the purple outline for that channel. It's not gonna be filled in. And you can see the relative level going up and down both on this indicator here, and you can see it over on the left side on that purple bar that goes up and down. If it's up all the way, you can see it over there. We can also see what channels this bass guitar is sent to. You can see if it's sent to any of the monitor mixes. We can see where it's sent to our buses or our groups for our streaming mix and see where else that's sent. So we can see everywhere where this bass is sent from this page. Now we also have effect sends, and those are all the way over here on the right. If we wanted to get to our effect sends from a send page, we've got these four buttons over here. So if we wanted to put reverb on the bass, which I don't recommend, but hey, you do you. We hit this button and turn this up. Now this is also being sent to effects one. So that's the routing page on your Allen & Heath SQ Series console. If you have any questions, be sure to type them down in the comments below. I love hearing from you guys and answering the questions that you have. If you wanna get more streamlined with your sound check process so that you don't miss any steps and everything gets done that needs to be done, including things like checking the stream and making sure that things are recording properly, go ahead and check out my free sound check checklist. You can download it through the link down in the description below. Hey, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe and don't ding the little bell because you don't need any more notifications in your life. And remember, it's all about the low end, avoid the sound tech solo, and nobody leaves church humming the kick drum. We'll see you back here next time on Attaway Audio.